So, welcome to the lecture series on nonlinear programming. <coughs> we have already seen what convex functions are and we have seen some of the important properties of convex functions. Now, we will see some more properties of convex functions. So, epigraph we have already defined what epigraph is, epigraph is nothing but epigraph of a function f is nothing but all those x alpha such that x belongs to s alpha is any real number and f x is less than equals to alpha. This is what epigraph means, epigraph is epigraph of function f is nothing but all those x alpha such that x belongs to a set s, alpha belongs to r and f x less than equals to alpha and it is nothing but a subset of r n plus 1 that we have already seen because this x belongs to r n and alpha belongs to r. So, this is nothing but uh, this uh, triplet will belongs to this tuple will belongs to r n plus 1. Now, uh, to show <coughs> Now, next theorem uh, states that that if s be a convex subset of r n and f is a function from s to r then then f is a convex function on s if and only if uh, its epigraph E f is a convex set. So, this is the uh, next uh, uh, theorem uh, or the result that f is a convex function on s f on S if and only if its epigraph is a convex set. Now, how to prove this? Let us see. Okay. So, uh, f is a convex function on S if and only if its epigraph is a convex set. So, this is to show. Now, how to show this? So, uh, first we will take that uh, f is a convex function and then we will try to show that its epigraph is a convex set and then we will take that uh, its epigraph is a convex set and try to show that its function is a convex function. Now, the first part is first is let f be a convex function. Okay. On S. Now, since f is a convex function this means f of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 will be less than equals to lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 f x 2 for all x 1 x 2 in S and lambda between 0 and 1. Okay? This is by the definition of the convex function that f is a convex function uh, if f of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 is less than equals to lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda f x 2 and this must hold for all x 1 x 2 in S and lambda between 0 and 1. Now, what we have to show? We have to show that if f is a convex function then its epigraph is a convex set. To prove this take two arbitrary points in the uh, epigraph in the set that is epigraph and try to show that the convex linear combination of those two point is in S. Okay. So, uh, uh, let uh, x 1 alpha 1 and x 2 alpha 2 are in epigraph of the function f, because the points which are in epigraph are, are like this x comma alpha types. So, it will be x 1 alpha 1 and x 2 alpha 2 let us suppose it belongs to this epigraph. So, it means it means that f x 1 will be less than equals to alpha 1 and f x 2 will be less than equals to alpha 2 by the definition of epigraph. Okay. Now, take the convex linear combination of these two points. Okay. The convex linear combination will be nothing but lambda or times of first point and 1 minus lambda times of second point and uh, say it is uh, some x comma alpha for lambda between 0 and 1. Okay. So, let us suppose the convex linear combination uh, we represent this by x comma alpha. So, what will be x? x will be lambda x 1 lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 and what will be alpha? alpha will be lambda alpha 1 
प्लस वन माइनस लेमडा एल्फा टू नाउ टू शो दैट इट्स अ कॉन्वेक्स सेट वी हैव टू सिंपली शो दैट एक्स कॉम एल्फा बिलोंग्स टू एपिग्राफ दैट इज ई एफ ओके दैट मीन्स वी हैव टू शो दैट एफ एक्स इज लेस देन इक्वल टू एल्फा सो टेक एफ ऑफ एक्स एंड ट्राई टू शो दैट इट इज लेस देन इक्वल टू एल्फा सो वॉट विल बी एफ एक्स एफ एक्स विल बी नथिंग बट एफ ऑफ लेमडा एक्स वन प्लस वन माइनस लेमडा एक्स टू एंड बाय द डेफिनेशन ऑफ कॉन्वेक्स फंक्शन इट इज लेस देन इक्वल टू लेमडा एफ एक्स वन प्लस वन माइनस लेमडा एफ एक्स टू एंड एफ एक्स वन इज लेस देन इक्व टू एल्फा वन एंड एफ एक्स टू इज लेस देन इक्वल टू एल्फा टू बिकॉज दीज पॉइंट आर इन एपीग्राफ ऑफ एफ सो दिस इंप्लाइज दैट इज लेस देन इक्व टू लेमडा एल्फा वन प्लस वन माइनस लेमडा एल्फा टू बिकॉज दीज दिस लेमडा एंड वन माइनस लेमडा आर नॉन नेगेटिव वैल्यूज दे आर लाइंग बिटवीन जीरो एंड वन ओके सो एंड दिस इज नथिंग बट एल्फा दिस इज नथिंग बट एल्फा so we have shown that f of x is less than equal to alpha so this means if f of x is less than equal to alpha this means x comma alpha will belong to the epigraph so this implies x comma alpha will belongs to epigraph of the function f and that means epigraph is a convex set okay so in this way we can we can say that if function is a convex function that it's then its epigraph is a convex set now we will do the uh, we will try to prove the converse part we will take that a epigraph is a convex set and we will try to obtain that the function f is a convex function now let us see so <coughs> uh, now for converse part let epigraph of the function f be a convex set okay now uh, we have to show that function is a convex function so if its epigraph is a convex function take two arbitrary points now x1 comma fx1 and uh, x2 comma fx2 will definitely belongs to epigraph of uh, f this is because it is alpha it is alpha 1 now fx1 is less than equal to alpha this is obviously true because equality holds okay if it is alpha fx1 is less than equals to alpha alpha is fx1 fx2 is less than equals to fx2 it is obviously hold so these point definitely belongs to epigraph of the function f now it is given to us that the epigraph is a convex set so this means this implies lambda times the first point and 1 minus lambda times the second point must belongs to the epigraph For lambda between zero and one, okay. So this implies lambda x one plus one minus lambda x two, and lambda f x one plus one minus lambda f x two must belong to the epigraph of uh, the function f, okay. Now it belongs to the epigraph means what? If x comma alpha belongs to the epigraph, this means f x is less than equals to alpha. So this is this is some x and this is alpha. Okay. So this x comma alpha belongs to the epigraph means f x is less than equals to alpha. So f x is f of x. X is this quantity. This quantity, this term, is less than equals to alpha, and alpha is this quantity, lambda f x one plus one minus lambda f x two, and this implies. that f is convex is a convex function on s because x1 and x2 are any arbitrary points this means this is it hold for any x1 and x2 and hence function is a convex function on s so in this way we can say that if a uh, epigraph of function is a convex set then also we can say that a function is a convex function okay so if we have to show that a function is a convex function either we use the definition of a convex uh, function which is f of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 less than equals to lambda fx1 plus 1 minus lambda fx2 or we can also find this epigraph and try to show that epigraph of the function f is a convex set okay
Now, similarly, uh, uh, using hypograph, hypograph is a hypograph of function f is nothing but all those x alpha such so, x belongs to s alpha belongs to r f x greater than equals to alpha. So, this is hypograph function f. So, if x s is a convex set and f is a function from s to r then f is a concave function on s if and only if its hypograph is a convex set. So, the proof of this can also be obtained on the same lines on the lines of the proof which we did earlier. Okay. So, in order to prove that a function is a concave function find its hypograph and try to show that a hypograph of the function f is a convex set. Okay. Now, we have a result now let f i be a family of functions which are convex and bounded from above on a convex set S subset of R n. Then the function which is given by a supremum of f i is also a convex function. So, let us try to prove this. So, uh, uh, for example, suppose you are taking a maximum of x and x square. Okay. Now, both functions are convex, x is a linear function, it is convex uh, a function is from r to r, x belongs to r. x square is also a convex function that we that we have also seen uh, that x square is a convex function and maximum of two convex functions also convex okay, that we can easily show, we can easily see graphically. See uh, x y equal to x is this line okay, and y equal to x square is this this is an intersection point. Okay. Now, what is the supremum of uh, this function? Supremum of this function is if you take function from say from uh, 0 to 2. So, 0 to 2 it is nothing but from here to here this is this is the maximum value when it is 1 okay. and from 1 to 2 this is the maximum value this curve. So, this shaded line and this is the maximum uh, or the function from 0 to 2 say 2 is here. Okay. Say 2 is somewhere here. So, the maximum of uh, maximum of x and x square is this function. Now, if we take the epigraph of this function, so epigraph of this function is nothing but this set and which is convex and since it is convex. So, we can say by the uh, def by the theorem that uh, the constant function if it is a function f then this function is a convex function. So, this is this theorem that the supremum of uh, f i is also a convex function the proof is very simple can be obtained let us try to obtain the proof. Now, f i are convex f i are convex functions on S for all i. So, this implies because we know a theorem that if functions are convex then the epigraph is a convex set. So, this implies E of f i are convex set for all i and since it is a convex set. So, this means uh, intersection is also a convex set. Because intersection of any number of convex set is also convex. Okay. Now, let us see the intersection of E f i what what this represent this is nothing but all those x alpha such that x belongs to s alpha belongs to r and f i x is less than equals to alpha for all i uh, uh, is con is a convex set. A intersection of E of f i is a convex set. What does intersection represent? Intersection of E f i represent all those x alpha so x belongs to s alpha belongs to r and f i x less than equals to alpha for all i because it is an intersection that means for all i is a convex set. 
Now, if it is true for all i, this means it will be equals to it will be equal to supremum of i also. Supremum of i less than equals to alpha is also a convex set. Okay, and this is nothing but is equals to all those x alpha such that x belongs to S, alpha belongs to R and supremum of f i is nothing but f x. So, it is f x less than equals to alpha is a convex set. So, this means this means epigraph of f where f is nothing but supremum of f i is a convex set. And since epigraph of f is a convex set, this means f is a convex function, convex function on S, okay. because we know that if uh, epigraph of function is a convex set, this means the function is a convex function. And since epigraph of f is a convex set, so this implies the concerned per, uh, function the corresponding function is a convex function and what is the corresponding function? It is nothing but supremum of f i. So, hence we can say that if we have a collection of a convex functions, the supremum of the convex functions is also convex. Okay. Now, now let us define differentiable convex functions. If let f be a function from S to R be differentiable at x bar belongs to S, where S is an open subset of R n, then for x plus x bar belongs to S, f of x plus x bar will be equal to f of x bar plus x transpose gradient of f x bar plus alpha is a function of x bar and x and norm of x where this term will tend to 0 as x tending to 0. So, this is how we, uh, we define uh, a function is uh, once differentiable at x bar belongs to s. Okay. Uh, what is gradient of f x bar? Gradient of f x bar is a vector basically. So, gradient of f at x bar is nothing but del f upon del x 1 del f upon del x 2 and del f upon del x. So, this is gradient of f x bar. Okay. Now, if a function is twice differentiable at x bar, then, then f of x plus x bar is equals to f x bar plus x transpose gradient of f x bar plus half of this term plus beta x bar x norm of x square where this term tend to 0 as x tending to 0. So, this is how we can define uh, the function f if function is once or twice differentiable at x bar. Okay. Now, wh now what, is, what is gradient square of f x bar? Let us define this thing also. Gradient square of f x bar is nothing but a matrix and we call it Hessian matrix we call it Hessian matrix of f at x bar and what it is? It is nothing but del square f upon del x 1 square, del square f upon del x 1 del x 2 and so on, del square f upon del x 1 del x n, then del square f upon del x 2 del x 1, del square f upon del x 2 square and so on del square f upon del x 2 del x n and it is del square f upon del x n del x 1, del square f upon del x n del x 2 and so on del square f upon del x n square. So, this is how we can define uh, n cross n, uh, n cross n symmetric matrix, a uh, symmetric matrix uh, which we call as Hessian matrix at of f at x bar.
Okay, this is gradient square of f at x bar. Now, we have our next result for a convex function which is if f is a function from s to r which is differentiable function on a open convex subset s of r n then the function f is a convex function if and only if f of x 1 minus f x 2 is greater than equals to x 1 minus x 2 transpose gradient of f x 2 and this should hold for all x 1 h 2 belongs to s. So, now let us try to prove this result. So, what this result is basically this is uh, f x 1 minus f x 2 is greater than equals to x 1 minus x 2 transpose gradient of f x uh, 2 and this should hold for all x 1 x 2 belongs to s. And uh, what we have to show that f is a convex function on s if and only if this happens. Okay. So, first uh, let us assume that f is a convex function and we will try to show that uh, this result hold. Okay. So, first let f be a convex function. Okay. Let f be a convex function on S. So, convex function means f of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 must be less than equals to uh, lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda f x 2 for all x 1 h 2 in S and lambda between 0 and 1. Okay. Now, what is uh, f of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2? It is nothing but it can be written as f of lambda x 1 minus x 2 plus x 2. You can take this lambda common from these two terms. It is lambda of x 1 minus x 2 plus x 2. Now, it is given to us that function is differentiable differentiable on an open convex set S of R and this means differentiable for all points in S. Okay. So, if it is differentiable this means uh, this means this means the first uh, first result holds. Okay. So, let us try to uh, use this result. So, here suppose this is x this quantity is x and this is uh, x bar. Okay. So, you use uh, this result it is x, it is x bar. So, it is equal to f of x bar plus x x transpose gradient of f x 2 plus alpha times x bar and x and norm of lambda x 1 minus x 2. Okay. This is simply by this uh, result okay. and where this limit tending to 0, where, uh, where as limit uh, of alpha lambda x 1 minus x 2 comma x 2 will be equal to 0 as lambda tending to 0 here. Big. So, f of uh, x plus x bar is equals to f of x bar plus uh, x transpose f x gradient of f x bar plus alpha function of x bar and x and norm of x. Okay. So, now this is equals to now this quantity from this expression is uh, is greater than is less than or equals to lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda f x 2. Okay. From this expression, this quantity is less than equal to means this this is equal to this means this quant this expression is less than equal to this quantity. So, what we obtain from here? This implies f of x 2 plus lambda times x 1 minus x 2 transpose because lambda is a scalar we can take it out and it is gradient of f x 2 plus alpha of alpha function of lambda x 1 minus x 2 comma x 2 
no, lambda can take out because it is between 0 and 1 and norm of x1 minus x2 which is less than or equals to lambda fx1 plus fx2 minus lambda fx2 you multiply fx2 here. Now, this fx2 and fx2 cancels out from both the expressions you divide by lambda throughout. So, what we obtain? We obtain that x1 minus x2 whole transpose gradient of fx2 plus alpha lambda into x1 minus x2 comma x2 norm of x1 minus x2 is less than equals to fx1 minus fx2. Okay. Now, as now take lambda tend to 0 both the sides. If you take lambda tend to 0 both the side, so this, this term will tend to 0. If so taking lambda tend to 0 implies x1 minus x2 whole transpose gradient of fx2 is less than or equals to fx1 minus fx2. Okay. So, we have proved the first part. So, we have taken that f is a convex function and we have obtained that f of x1 minus fx2 is greater than equals to x1 minus x2 transpose gradient fx2. Okay. Now, we will try to show the converse part. Okay. So, in the converse part, we will suppose that this condition hold and try to obtain that the function is a convex function. So, so uh, let x equals to uh, lambda f x x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2, we are lambda between 0 and 1. Now, this uh, inequality hold for, for every x y and x 2 and uh, x is a convex subset of R n. Okay. So, this will hold for uh, x 1 and x also. So, if we apply for x 1 and x, so, this will be greater than or equals to x 1 minus x transpose gradient of f x. Okay. Because, because we have suppose that this condition hold, this condition hold means this inequality hold for, uh, for all x 1 x 2 in s and we have to show that the concern that the corresponding function f is a convex function. Okay. So, uh, we have uh, so so, this result will hold for x1 and x also. So, we have applied this result for x1 and x. So, we obtain this thing. So, what it is equal to? It is equals to it is equals to x1 minus x. x1 minus x will be nothing but 1 minus lambda times x1 minus x2 transpose gradient of fx. So, suppose it is the first expression. Now, the same result will also hold for x2 and x. Okay, because it is holding for all x1, x2 in S and this this is in S because S is a convex set. Okay. So, f x2 minus f x again will be greater than equals to x2 minus x whole transpose gradient of f x. Now, what is x2 minus x? When you compute x2 minus x, so it will be nothing but it will be nothing but x2 minus x will be nothing but minus lambda times x1 minus x2 whole transpose gradient of fx. Okay. Now, now we have to obtain that we have to derive that function is a convex function that means f of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 is less than equals to lambda fx1 plus 1 minus lambda fx2. So, uh, we have to obtain that result. So, you multiply this with lambda and this with 1 minus lambda. Okay. Uh, multiply 1 with lambda and 2 with 1 minus lambda and add them. So, what we obtain? What we obtain? We get lambda of f x 1 minus lambda f x from this side plus 1 minus lambda f x 2 minus 1 minus lambda f x is greater than equals to 
Now, when you multiply this with lambda and this with this with lambda and this with 1 minus lambda and add them, so both things will cancel out. So, we will get 0 on the right hand side. Okay. So, what we obtain from here? This, this implies lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda f x 2 will be greater than or equals to lambda f x and lambda f x will cancel out. So, this will be greater than or equals to f x and x is nothing but the convex linear combination of x 1 and x 2, so, which is nothing but is equals to f of you substitute the value of x, x is this quantity. So, it is lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2. So, hence we have obtained that f of lambda x 1 plus 1 lambda x 2 is less than or equals to lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda f x 2. This implies f is a convex function. Okay. So, we can easily see that uh, if f is a convex function, then f of x 1 minus f of x 2 will be greater than or equals to x 1 minus x 2 transpose gradient of f x 2. Now, what this expression geometrically indicates, let us see. Okay. Let us see what this what this expression geometrically indicates. So, uh, you draw you draw the function f. Take a point x two. Suppose this is x two. Draw a tangent at this point. Tangent will be nothing but this one, this straight line. Okay. Take another point, say x1 here. So what what this will be? This uh, length. So from here to here it is x2. From here to here it is x1. So it will be nothing but x1 minus x2. This quantity. Okay. So uh, what will be the equation of this line? Now, at, at the point uh, x 2 comma f x 2, the equation of the line will be nothing but y minus f x 2 is equals to uh, m, m is the slope of the line, slope is f dash x 2 and x minus x 2. Okay. Now, we want to find out, uh, uh, we want to find out uh, this point we want to find out this point. So, this one will be nothing but to substitute x as x 1, x as x 1. So, what we obtain? So, y will be nothing but f x 2 plus x 1 minus x 2 f dash x 2. So, this if you are taking as this as x 1 comma y. So, this y is nothing but this expression and uh, you can easily see that this point is nothing but uh, x 1 comma f x 1. So, x 1 is f x 1 is this uh, this height f x 1 and this is f y, uh, if this is y. Okay. So, f x 1 f x 1 is greater than equals to y. So, f x 1 is greater than equals to y means this expression gradient or for the first case it is derivative this expression means this result. So, that means that uh, if you draw a tangent at any point on the convex function that tangent always lies below the curve. If you take because this length is always less than this length. So, that means if you have a convex function and you draw a tangent at any point on the convex function, the tangent always lies below the curve. Okay. So, this is geometrically interpretation of uh, this inequality. So, we can prove uh, some uh, functions to be convex using this expression also. How? So, let us see one example. Suppose you have to show that function x square where x belongs to r is a convex function. So, we have already seen that we can also show, we can show this as a convex function simply by applying the definition of the convex function, but we can also show this to be convex using this result, using this result. Now, let us see what is, 
एफ एक्स वन माइनस एफ एक्स टू माइनस एक्स वन माइनस एक्स टू ट्रांसपोज डेरिवेटिव ऑफ एक्स टू बिकॉज इट इज इन आर ओके एंड वी हैव टू शो दैट दिस क्वांटिटी इज ग्रेटर देन इक्वल टू जीरो देन वी कैन से बाय दिस थ्यूरम दैट फंक्शन इज अ कॉन्वेक्स फंक्शन सो वॉट वॉट दिस एक्सप्रेशन इज फॉर दिस फंक्शन इट इज एक्स वन स्क्वेयर माइनस एक्स टू स्क्वेयर माइनस एक्स वन माइनस एक्स टू वॉट इज डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस फंक्शन एक्स टू इट इज टू एक्स टू सो दिस इज नथिंग बट एक्स वन स्क्वेयर एंड दिस इज प्लस एक्स टू स्क्वेयर माइनस टू एक्स वन एक्स टू विच इज नथिंग बट एक्स वन माइनस एक्स टू होल स्क्वेयर एंड विच इज ग्रेटर टू जीरो ऑलवेज फॉर ऑल एक्स वन एक्स टू सो दिस इम्प्लाइज फंक्शन इज अ कॉन्वेक्स फंक्शन बिकॉज दिस इन इक्वालिटी मस्ट बी ग्रेटर टू जीरो एंड दैट वी हैव शोन that for this function x square this inequality is greater than equal to 0 hence we can say that the given function x square is a convex function so sometimes to prove that a function is a convex function we can also use this definition okay so we can, we will see some more properties of convex function in the next class so thank you